Good morning, everybody. Very good to welcome you back to Les Escop for this service of morning prayer. I am Bishop Philip, and this is... I'm Ruth, and I'm married to Philip. Uh, you're very welcome here today as we come to worship together, and it's lovely to have you with us. Um, this, uh, this morning, in this service, we're going to be focusing, as we did last week, on the epistle, on the uh, reading from uh, Acts. The order of service is online, but as Ruth always says, you, you don't need it. Although we have actually changed some of the liturgy a little uh, this week. So if you do have the ability to access that, uh, then please do. But please don't worry if you're not able to. So let's start with these wonderful uh, words of welcome that Christians have been using to greet one another in the name of the Lord uh, for millennia. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and, and be, be glad, glad in, in it. it. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. So come. Let us return to the Lord and say, Lord, Lord our, our God, God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for, for he, he has, has heard, heard the voice of our prayer. prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance with joy, and, and in, in our, our song will we praise, praise our God. God. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death you have brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. So we come to the section of our service called the Word of God, and uh, we start with our psalm for today, which is Psalm 66, and we begin at verse 7. As ever, we will say this uh, responsively. I will say the odd-numbered verses. Please r respond with Ruth uh, by saying the even verses with her. Bless our God, O you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who holds our souls in life and suffers not our feet to slip. For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of liberty. I will come into your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer you fat burnt sacrifices with the smoke of rams. I will sacrifice oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. I called out to him with my mouth and his praise was on my tongue. If I had nursed evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has heeded the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his loving mercy from me. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the, Son, and and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Our epistle this morning is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 17, 
starting to read at verse 16. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he isn't far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. And we respond to the reading of God's word using these words from Colossians 3. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead and Christ shall give you light. You have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. And Christ shall give you light. When Christ our life appears, you will appear with him in glory. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. And our Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 14, starting to read at verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Amen. In these weeks of the Easter season, alongside our lectionary readings from the Gospels, we've been taken on a little tour through some of the earliest Christian preaching of the Easter good news in the book of Acts. And today we come to St Paul in the city of Athens. Athens in Paul's day was not a whole lot unlike London in our day, or indeed UK society more broadly. It was a major world commercial, intellectual and cultural centre, a city with a long and proud history, a place that had been the centre of an empire, a cosmopolitan place where people from all across the world gathered and lived cheek by jowl. So it follows that Paul's reactions to the situation he found in Athens, given those similarities, are going to have some vital things to say to us today. And what Paul saw and said calls us to three things, to passion, to relevance, and to worship. To start with passion, Paul didn't approach Athens like a tourist would, setting out to see the sites, the Acropolis and the Parthenon and all the rest. He didn't look at the city through tourist eyes, but through Christian eyes. And what he saw horrified him. 
Before our passage begins, we're told that he was deeply distressed to see that the city was full of idols. It was said that it was easier to meet a god than it was to meet another person in ancient Athens. And what is Paul's reaction to that? He feels real indignation about what he sees as idolatry. The word translated deeply distressed is the word that the Old Testament uses to describe how God himself reacts to idolatry when, for instance, he saw the golden calf that Aaron and the others had made while Moses was up the mountain. Why do the Lord and Paul react like this? Simply because it denies God the worship that is rightfully his. Henry Martin, a famous son of Cornwall, to whom the baptistry in our cathedral is dedicated, was a missionary in Persia in the early years of the 19th century. And he said this, I could not endure existence if Jesus was not glorified. It would be hell to me if he were always to be dishonoured. I've no doubt that our primary motivation in sharing the Easter faith ought to be that we should want people to share with us the love, the hope, the peace that is ours in Christ. But I don't think we should be blind to this other issue either. We ought to be passionate about wanting our God to be given his due, to be honoured for who he is. And then secondly, we're called to relevance. How does Paul react in the face of the passion he feels? He doesn't rush around the city defacing the idols. He sets out not to confront, but to communicate. He talks to people in language they understand. He doesn't launch into some kind of religious diatribe that goes right over their heads. He starts with a simple observation about their city and talks to them on their terms and doesn't expect them to talk to him on his. He's taken the trouble to find out where they're coming from. And even when he does move on to talk about more obviously spiritual things, he's still talking their kind of language, even quoting their own poets. And we need to listen to this call to be relevant. Very often the church has been very bad at actually listening to the world around us. We assume we have all the answers, but don't bother to find out what questions people are asking. All too often we run the risk of talking to people in language that means nothing at all to them. If there's been anything encouraging about this crisis that we're in, it's been the way in which people in the church and in the wider community have worked together to meet the needs that have emerged. Perhaps we're learning afresh to be relevant, to get alongside our friends and neighbours, listening to them, understanding them, loving them, and simply being more like Jesus to them, for there is nothing that can be more relevant than that. And I hope that that will be an enduring fruit of this crisis for us all. Paul is passionate, but he expresses his passion in terms that are relevant, gracious, courteous and comprehensible. But there is nonetheless a real edge in what he says. What he issues to these people in Athens, and indeed to us, is an uncompromising call to worship. These Athenians were enjoying what you might call a religious buffet. But what Paul is not doing, despite what, it, what his listeners might expect, is putting another dish on the table. Not at all. He's serving up a completely new meal. He starts with an altar to an unknown God. But he proceeds to tell them about his God, who far from being unknown, can be known by ordinary men and women. He is the creator of the universe, who doesn't live in shrines and can't be put in a box. He is the sustainer of life. Not only has he created things, but he keeps them going. He is the lord of space and time. Both the history and geography of each nation on earth are ultimately under his control. He is our father. We are his children, made in his image. So we mustn't think that we can turn the tables on him and make images of him. We stand below him, not above him and therefore we must worship him. And what's more, says Paul, we must do that now. Jesus has risen from the dead, so now is the time to make your mind up, because not only has he risen as our saviour, but he's risen as our judge too. And we as Christians today need to heed this call to us, to turn from our own idols, whatever they may be. They may indeed be good things, 
like our health, our families, our friends. But even good things can become idols when we put them in the way of the best thing. We are made to worship the Lord our God, who has made himself known in Jesus Christ our Lord. And we must not let anything, however good, get in the way of that. But we should gently and lovingly call other people to worship the living God too. And we should do that because that is simply the very best thing for us all. The great healthcare and economic challenges of our times, and they will be with us for some time, call us, call us all to get our own houses in order and to turn afresh to the one alone in whom our hope lies, the one who created us, who loves us and gave himself for us. So let's turn afresh to him, to worship him, and to find in him all the hope we need for the future, whatever it may bring us. Amen. Amen. I'm going to use some slightly different words today to affirm our faith. These are taken from Philippians chapter 2. You're probably very familiar with these words, but in the light of Paul's preaching about Jesus, it felt uh, appropriate to use them for us ourselves to affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And so together we say, Though, Though he, was he was divine, divine he did, did not cling to equality, equality with God, but made himself nothing, Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now we come to our prayers. And the response today is, Lord, have mercy. When I say, let us pray to the Lord, please respond, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace that comes from God alone, for the unity of all peoples and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the Church of Christ here in Cornwall and across the world, and for the whole people of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the nations of the world struggling to know how best to cope with this pandemic and its aftermath. For Elizabeth, our Queen, and for all in authority. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this Duchy of Cornwall, for our neighbours and friends, and for all who support and serve us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and suffering, and for those we name in silence now. And for all in any need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for those suffering violence and abuse, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the dying, for those who mourn, for the faithful whom we entrust to the Lord in hope, as we look forward to the day when we share the fullness of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And rejoicing in the communion of St. Piran, St. Petrox, St. Michael, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to our God. We keep silence together. For yours is the majesty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
and now a, a very familiar hymn to many of us uh, read as a poem. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess him king of glory now. Tis the Father's pleasure we should call him Lord, who from the beginning was the mighty word. At his voice, creation sprang at once to sight. All the angel faces, all the hosts of light, thrones and dominations, stars upon their way, all the heavenly orders in their great array. Humbled for a season to receive a name from the lips of sinners unto whom he came, faithfully he bore it, spotless to the last, brought it back victorious, when from death he passed. In your hearts enthrone him. There let him subdue all that is not holy, all that is not true. Crown him as your captain in temptation's hour. Let his will enfold you in its light and power. Brothers, this Lord Jesus shall return again with his Father's glory with his angel train, for all wreaths of empire meet upon his brow, and our hearts confess him King of glory now. Amen. And the collect for the sixth Sunday of Easter. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us, he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So thank you again for joining with us. Uh, we wish you a, a very happy, uh, a blessed uh, and a safe uh, week to come. May God bless and keep you. And here is uh, a blessing for us all. The spirit of truth leads you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And let us bless one another as we say the words of the grace together. The grace, the grace of, of our, our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and, and the, the love of God and, and the, the fellowship, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be, be with, with us all evermore. evermore. Amen. 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 So God bless you. Have a good Happy and a safe week. Goodbye. Goodbye.